Martin Luther, who lived from 1483 to 1546, was originally an Augustinian monk who began the Protestant Reformation as a reaction against what he perceived as a betrayal of Christian ideals by the wealthy and very self-indulgent Catholic Church based at the Vatican in Rome. The Church had already gone through several cycles of corruption and reform, which had usually been led by new religious orders of monks, such as the Franciscans and the Dominicans in the 13th century. Among Luther's radical ideas was that the Catholic Church and the papacy was so corrupt and had fallen so far away from the actual ideals of Christianity that it needed to be reestablished rather than simply reformed. Luther had received a doctorate of theology in 1512, and he joined the faculty of the University of Wittenberg in Germany. Wittenberg is an ancient and venerable European university. In Shakespeare's play, Hamlet is returning from school in Wittenberg to attend the funeral of his murdered father. In 1516, the church began selling indulgences to raise money for the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Indulgences were basically tickets for time off in purgatory, and Luther objected on theological grounds. He didn't think it was fair for the church to be playing with the eternal salvation or damnation of people in order to raise money. He also criticized the wealthy pope for taxing the poor to build an unnecessary Vatican monument that he could have easily have paid for himself. Luther didn't originally intend to split from the Catholic Church, but after his objections called the 95 Theses were translated from Latin to German, his criticism of the church and his new approach to theology began to catch on. Luther was tried for heresy, which is no laughing matter. The Czech religious reformer Jan Hus had been burned at the stake in 1415. And Luther was tried and excommunicated in 1521. The church banned Luther's books, but Luther was a prolific writer who went on to publish dozens of works using the new printing techniques that were becoming available and condemning the Roman church. Luther also translated the Bible into German and wrote a hymnal so that Germans could worship in their own language and understand what was being said in church services. This personal relationship with scripture and with religious practice was one of the big innovations of Protestantism. Latin remained the official language of the Catholic Church until 1965. Printing presses and Bibles in vernacular languages helped to expand literacy, which helped to accelerate not only the Reformation, but also what became the European Enlightenment, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Many members of the nobility, particularly in northern Germany and Scandinavia, embraced Luther's ideas, not only for theological reasons, but also for political reasons. They saw an opportunity to stop paying tribute and stop being forced to pledge to submit to the authority of the Pope in Rome. The Reformation was not the only challenge that alarmed religious authorities into reacting with persecution. When Galileo used a telescope to prove Copernicus's new theories and extend our understanding of planetary motion beyond the second century theories of Ptolemy, it wasn't the ancient Greeks who put him under house arrest for the rest of his life and nearly burned him as a heretic. It was the Catholic Church because Copernicus and Galileo, they thought, were rejecting a human-centered world that had been founded, they said, by God himself. Galileo's challenge to the church's outdated description of the natural world was just the first of many disputes that science has had and continues to have with religious authority. To be fair, though, the idea that new data should challenge centuries of intellectual and theological tradition was as radical an idea itself as the idea that the Earth orbits around the Sun and not vice versa. The Church and European society in general was built around eternal and unchanging truths and believed 
that there were eternal answers for social and personal conditions. Although today we're accustomed to the idea that new information is always becoming available that will disrupt and reorganize the way we understand the world, this was not part of the early modern worldview. And this is part of what makes Galileo and Luther such radical figures in European and Western history. As challenges became more frequent, some people tried to resist them by force. The Inquisition and the persecution of witches flourished because authorities felt threatened. And the doctrine of papal infallibility didn't even exist until the first Vatican Council of 1868, when science had by then gained a pretty substantial lead over faith. This is something to think about, since it implies that the Catholic Church had never felt a need to declare infallibility until it was challenged. And curiously, the papacy has only used that authority once, in 1950, in relation to doctrines concerning Mary, the mother of Jesus. So, before I continue, a couple of questions about this. Was Luther justified, do you think, in criticizing the church leaders in the Vatican? Secondly, what other motivations did people have for rejecting Roman authority beyond theological differences? And then finally, do you think the church's reaction to the challenges of new doctrines and new information about the world was appropriate? 